Welcome back, my fellow planetary nomads, to another episode of Planet Nomads. Now, last episode we traveled, looked at a few monuments, and I couldn't get anything to work. But one thing that was mentioned by subscriber Donald Alt uh, Anderson was that uh, I need to check the four posts in the little control panel thing and also try pressing spacebar when I'm in the middle of the monument. So I'm going to test that as soon as this radiation thing goes away. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I jumped out, was only out for a few seconds, immediately got the radiation warning, and it's not going away. Apparently the radiation part is affecting me even right there. So we're just going to go ahead before I get radiation burn or something. Yeah, okay, so there. That's why I was able to get it on the one monument and not on these. So you have to actually target those. And then map. Whoa. Okay. That's a uh, wreck. There's a monument. Ah, so we're getting a power thing now. Saying, like, okay, so it's not just predefined coordinates for them. You're not just saying, hey, I want to go here and it teleports you there. Or, you know, you hit teleport, it just takes you automatically to a certain one. It takes you to any of them that you have room, or uh, power, that is, to reach. Teleport. Yeah, te can't teleport. Can't. Okay. I may maybe I am supposed to put it in all four? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's, you know, one in each. Okay, so that one took one. That took one. And that took one. Okay, so yeah, you've got to put one in each of them. And let's see, can I teleport here? I'm not actually going to save at this point. I'm just going to use it and see what it does. Oh, of course, save game. It does the auto save. And now it's generating a world basically it's reloading me in the world like i'm assuming even though i was there it's like hey we gotta reload the whole thing so yeah okay that's all it did was just reload me at a new location and i am here <laughs> right next to this i've got a man-made wreck there i'm yeah so easy way to get around except i did abandon my vehicle <laughs> and what did i get aluminum ah I really don't need aluminum. Uh, so I'm back at this monument. And nothing in there. So really, I'd have to use another four, I'm assuming, to go back to this one. If I'm actually able to target it right. There we go. Yep. So basically, I can go back. Uh, I'll just have to use another four. And I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to reload my game back to where I was, and we'll continue with our exploration further along the planet's surface. Okay, so I have reloaded, I'm on my way, about to come up to another man-made wreck area, and I've already picked up some more distress beacons, so I've got some good stuff going in this direction. Maybe getting some more coordinates from them, but, you know, it's not going to be the coordinates for the monuments. This is just going to be maybe more information regarding the story of what's been going on, with the survivor here, you know, my, my character and others who are here. Maybe get some more insight to what's going on with this planet. Maybe somebody figured it out. We'll start taking this stuff apart. I also will mention at this moment that another thing Donald Anderson mentioned in his comment was to do with the lag I experienced in the last episode. Uh, he had similar issues with his game, and one thing he noticed or two things he noticed one is he lagged up when he went through multiple biomes which is exactly what i was doing the last two episodes traveling through biome after biome however in the last episode the part where it became a problem was around a certain biome area and not just that particular biome itself but a certain region i guess some element in that region because as soon as i moved far enough away outside of that area, right next to the biome still, just crossing into a new one, suddenly the lag went away and I was perfectly fine. So there was some artifact somewhere, some element in the game being loaded that was causing it to lag. Maybe a physics collision or something like that. The other thing he mentioned, of course, is Steam doing an update. And while I checked and Steam was not doing any update last week when I was recording, 
I have disconnected from the internet for this recording just to see if it makes any difference. So if we see no lag today, then it was Steam's fault. We blame Steam for updating while I'm doing something, you know, like playing a game. But if I still have lag, then we know it's nothing to do with that. It is something game-wise in terms of how things are loading or whatever with that. Ooh, we got a bigger piece of wreck here. Like, not the stuff I can make, but actual, like, ship wreckage. You know, I've seen the fin here before. This, I've seen. It's the part below here. I have not seen that. It's like a big chunk with a big metal girder on it. Shipwreck wall. Still less uh, hit points than the actual survival pods. Or escape pods, sorry. I'm getting a lot of super alloy because of all these. If you ever need super alloy, and you're having trouble finding what you need to make it yourself, go searching for man-made wrecks. You find the survival pods, the escape pods, great source of super alloy. And I do not need any biomass. Still, I've got too much biomass as it is. Let's see, what can I dump in now? Oh yeah, more Xenot, more, more pretty much everything. I'm gathering a few things as I go. Just in case I happen to come across a point where, like, you know what, let's build a base here. And I need some extra supplies. You, know, I, As much as I've brought with me and I continue to gather from all of these wrecks, I don't want to risk having that problem. And you can see we are here in the jungle again. And I'm in the southern hemisphere now. And there's the equator. So I'm right here at the jungle area. Let's see. That is the base that I currently have been using, the big platform. And you see how close it is to the equator. So it's pretty much a symmetrical distance. The equator is very hot, dry, desert, very quick to get you overheated. The poles are very cold. And in between, it goes in pretty much the same sequence. The closer you get to the pole, the less you'll see a plant life, more goes towards tundra, open spaces, and then the closer you are to the equator, more desert-like. So you have this kind of Goldilocks zone where you get forests such as that in the distance there, and then the jungle that you had, can actually find like a lot of supplies, get a lot of biomass, things like that that you need. Okay, at this wreck, we actually have a habitat sort of thing. You know, some kind of structure where they were you know, like living quarters set up and, you know, a few little pieces here and there. Stuff falling off. Ah, what we have? 3D printer with some conveyors. So that's nice. Give me some good resources there. Mechanical parts. That's always good. Ooh, very nice. Basic frame, plating, stuff like that. Oh, uh, we'll get a multi-tool Mark II. We got some nutrition capsules, which I have yet to even use once, I think. And let's check out the message. Mom tells me I shouldn't work so much. I'm too hard on myself. Yeah, yeah, but see me, Ma? There is nobody else on this freaking planet. So who's going to do all the work? So hey, yeah, apparently somebody else who is on their own kind of thing. And uh, I, I, it seems like now they're like, nobody else is here. But at the same time, they're, you know, they're saying, let me call so-and-so to come over here. Like they're either reminiscing about you know, when they actually had friends around and they weren't on their own. Or, they're going crazy and making up some people to live here. You know, it's their version of Castaways Wilson. We're, we're going to get all these supplies. I also found another Beacon Fort Alien Wreck that's only 1.6 kilometers from here. So, it won't take very long to get over there. We're going to go that way. Because while these are useful in certain regards, getting parts, uh, that's better. That gives me more stuff in terms of like what I cannot get readily elsewhere. Where's that stupid beacon? There's a. Isn't there. There. there it's 10? Nah, uh, 8 says. So it's, it's, really? It's over. There! Really? They hit it! They really hid that beacon. So here we are at another alien wreck, I guess. It's not really a monument, it's just a wreck. Some Xehanot, titanium, of course. We, they seem to like putting those elements in there. Oh no, Who, who's after me? Oh, it's you. 
one of the gorillas. Of course, that's what happened to me at the first uh, monument I found early in my gameplay. Before I had an actual weapon. Come on, man. Go down! He, he doesn't know which way to turn with the little storage box there. Alright, we're gonna get some food from you at least. There we go. I really don't need the biomass, but might as well take it from him. That way I get the food as well. And it's where you got these wrecks that you obviously... It, it's a wreck. It's not a monument. It's a wreck. But it's very well intact. And it doesn't look like a ship. I mean, where's the door to get in? But, you know, it is different from the monuments in that we don't have a little pad that we can use. But like, oh, hey, you know, let me go here, do this. You know, go to this other place, put some power in here. No, it is. There's like a storage box, just like at the monuments. And then this piece here that we assume to be wrecked. But it really doesn't seem to be a wreck. Considering that it's so very nicely intact, no damage, and the box is conveniently placed right there near it, the same way it is at the monuments. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have an address book. So we've got a new distress signal. Let me get that pulled up. Where? Where? All right. I think no Tartars. I recognize that name. Alcoon, I recognize that name. We're getting close again, finally, to over here. Alien Wreck, I need to go back there, double check that one. Maybe it's this one? Acteon. I think that might be it. I think I'm going to ignore this man-made wreck here uh, and go this way. Stay with the jungle. Lots of stuff there I can get. I like the jungle. It's more scenic. But, yeah, that's that. So we'll go there next. And then we've got a message. So, what's the message say? Report in relation to experiment, tip fail, program Nemesis. Okay, so I think this is the first time we've heard the name Nemesis. Uh, constant mutation control not possible. Cancel, terminate, dark world. So, we're I'm assuming this is the dark world. Or maybe there's another one that's called the dark world. Maybe it's, you know, Thor decided to come in and blow things up because he didn't want the Dark Elves to take over the experiment. Uh, managed to gain some insight to unknown enemy symbol. We're not prey to external force. Okay, fear comes from inside, not real war conflict, but def desperate struggle for survival. Nemesis is sophisticated nanobiotechnology immersed independently in the wake of their DNA reprogramming experiments. So, apparently, it, it, they didn't like plan for nemesis it sounds like it sounds more like they were working on their dna reprogramming experiments to make the animals better suited for their different environments which is why we have different color schemes to the same basic animals and then this thing of nanobiotechnology just basically manifested on its own like you know creating that singularity the ai that takes over everything Subsequently, the living program independently immunized itself from rewriting or deletion and became an omnivorous Trojan horse. A series of catastrophic events that ruptured their society. Many plants were affected. Uh, maybe those were all the ones that went dark. And this planet was compromised as well. Great! So, we've got something here that might try to, you know, eat us alive and reprogram our DNA. We might be getting our DNA reprogrammed as it is right now. We might already be mutating into some kind of flying, amphibious, humanoid creature. Which actually would be kind of cool. We could then ditch the spacesuit helmet and just be like, Oh yeah, I'm, I can breathe here now. I can do all this. I can go do whatever. I can fly in the sky without this, you know, contraption. That'd be kind of cool. Well, this is a little bit of a disappointing type wreck. We just have a big tank. Right here, cliffside, uh, a data pad. Get, just double check. Ooh, maybe not so bad after all. Nice big resource deposit there. And oh, I broke the beacon. I knocked it free. Let's stop. There's a piece there. Come on. Ooh, 
That was like a big deposit. And it, well, just this rock kind of sticking out over it. Anything? No. Well. Yeah, oh wait, there's one more little piece there. It looks like maybe a conveyor piece. Maybe. Uh, oh no, it's just a tiny sliver <laughs> of a block sticking out. That's all it was. Oh, that's interesting. Look, it's it's got this swirling pattern in the sky there. That's different. You see, it's right there. Just kind of see it. But it's got this swirling pattern instead of that. And I don't normally... I mean, I normally am not looking up at night uh, at the sky. I'm trying to find my way around. But that is interesting. There is like this swirl to it. Not there. You don't see it there. But there, in that little area, there's a swirl. Like, was that a black hole we're slowly drifting towards? And I'm going to find out very shortly that I have to get out of here very quickly because in the next few months or years or days, I might be sucked into a black hole. That would be bad. But all right, we're going to go straight west. I don't have anything beacon wise pointing in this direction. So I'm just going to fly straight west for a little bit and see what happens. Well, of course, as soon as I said that, I got an alert for a beacon. And I also realized that I did not look at the data pad we got. So let's take a look at the data pad as well. AI warning, system malfunction, yeah. Uh, going too fast, tear us apart. Well, obviously, that's what happened. Uh, structural damage, engineering deck one. Yeah, okay. Uh, need to stabilize manually, give the crew a chance. So, uh, basically, what happened as the actual wreck occurred, as the crash came down. Some people were keeping their heads. We've got to give them time to save as many lives as possible. And other people were like, screw them. Let's get out of here. All right, we got at least something a little different with this wreck. It's kind of spread out, even though it is some of the, you know, habitation type stuff. The walls and, ooh, it looks like, yeah, something under the, oh, there we go, yeah. Always pays to dig out a little bit around some of these structures because a lot of stuff gets buried. Despite the fact it doesn't look like it got buried, or if it did get buried, it's been buried for a very long time. As opposed to this being a, recent thing from like oh yeah you came down the wreck this seems more like it, it's stuff that has been here for a while and i accidentally completed that one Ooh, get the beacon while i am thinking about it oh hey resources there and let's see come on surely there's more yes no some you know trees in the way just make sure i'm not missing something because i can't see it Oh, there he is. Ah. All right, here is the chest. Oh, empty container. They they ripped me off. All right, well, once again, now I have no beacons pointing me in a certain direction. So it'd be time to, I guess, just continue west and immediately have something else pop up saying, hey, uh, here's a beacon because you said there's no beacons. Here's a beacon. I'm noticing I'm not seeing like visual lag as I'm flying, but I am getting lag trying to interact with stuff in the uh, cargo containers. It's not wanting to let me, you know, double click to pick something up and automatically put it in my storage. And there, oh yeah, now I am getting some lag. It's got to be something with the biome aspect. Like there's all the leaves being generated or something that is, is locking it up a bit. Okay, so I'm on a good path right now. I'm, I'm going pretty much due west. No beacons showing up other than the one that's way north of here, kind of out of the way. So I'm going to just keep going west at this point, try to make the full loop around back into charted waters, as it would be. And I need to find a faster vehicle this week. I need to find something small, compact, that... I don't need production, really. I need something that has some storage and mainly is cheap to build and easy to break down so I can use it for hopping between different areas as I go through these teleporters and be like, oh, hey, I teleported here. Now let's hop back 
uh, all around this area, explore some bit, and now I'll teleport again to the next one, build it again, and keep teleporting around like that so I can do some exploring that way. Um, we actually have a nice big track of water here, you know, uh, in this area, so that's nice. I do need to find a spot for my water base design that I still have and would still like to build, even though we're having problems with lagginess in certain elements in terms of base designs. Uh, but, you know, uh, this is definitely a very large map in terms of how long it's taken to get around it. You know, 35 kilometers an hour, if I went straight, it would take me more than an hour to go a complete loop around the planet. So it, it's a pretty decent sized map, but visually there's a lot of stuff that's just so similar between different areas. It's like, oh yeah, this is the island biome right here. I know this is the island biome because I can recognize it now. It's the jungle biome up there. You know, things like that is there's... Not as much variety as I think they could have in this, especially with the animal selection. But again, a big part of this game, and I'm sure the developers know this, is the building aspect that everybody is playing it for to be able to do big vessel designs and everything. So hopefully they're working more on fixing that stuff to improve that function of the game. But yes, that's going to be it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, leave me a comment below, and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week, and I will see you in the next video.